This Breakforth podcast is brought to you by Genesis Integration. Check us out on the web at www.gemint.com. Hello everyone, this is Brent Bauman, host of the Breakforth Podcast. At the recent Breakforth Canada 2008 conference, I had a chance to catch up with Belfast-based singer, composer, and worship artist, Robin Mark. Robin is a popular worship leader at Breakforth. He brings a really genuine passion for worship to the event, and it's really that passion that I wanted to talk to him about. So, Robin, do you feel that there's a trend towards treating worship kind of like entertainment? You know, there is a danger with that in, in any music, in any performance, any presentation that, 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 that people will come and their motivation for coming is maybe not, not the best. They, they, they enjoy the music and they just want to in, listen and, and enjoy it. But I, I'd like to think that, that as they start to join in and, and say some of the, the, the words that are part of the songs or uh, sing them out, that it it'll either intrigue them or it'll trigger something within their heart and they'll, they'll, they'll realize that this is more than just a nice tune and, and nice words. It's actually a, an offering. It's actually a, an act of worship. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that's all we can do. But yet, at the same time, you know, God... I always say it's like worship is a sacrifice. That, that's what, you know, it's based on, if you like, the, the burnt offering in the, in the old tabernacle where it was given and everything was consumed. So you give a burnt offering and you got nothing back. You know, the Levites didn't get to eat anything or whatever. You know, just everything was consumed. And so you give worship expecting nothing back. But God is very gracious and very good. And, you know, a number of times people have come to concerts that I've done. In fact, that's one of the things. You know, we we find we, we go and do a praise and worship concert. We call it that. And people come that are not Christians and go away believers. And it's they came just expecting to have a good time. But God's spirit worked through what was happening in the hall and in the in the place, and they, you know, so they got what they didn't expect, and I, and I think that's it. And so it's 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 probably sufficient, you know, for for me to keep my heart right. I think that's one of the responsibilities of the worship leader. If he ever gets carried away with his own importance and uh, thinks that you know what he's doing is is more important than what God wants to do, then you're really in trouble. But I think that the the the, the people that that come. Um, can come with all sorts of expectations and thoughts and ideas, and God will break through. So how does someone go about making this sacrifice, this this offering, particularly when they may not really feel like it? Do you know, I think the way the psalmist did it was he was he was uh, brutally honest, you know? And, and I, I don't think God minds when people come and be honest to him. And, you know, some of my favorite verses are where men are honest, with, with God. In fact, I've just been out of, come out of a little seminar I've been given there I've been mentioning Jonah again. And, and Jonah was a really miserable uh, you know, type of guy who, who, who just because things didn't go right, every time things didn't go right, he said to God, I wish I was dead, which is just unbelievable. But God kept using him. You know, and he, he, he said, will you go to the Ninevites? And Jonah said, no, I'm not going, and tried to escape. I, I read some commentary on Jonah, and it says that when he said he tried to, to catch a boat to Tarshish, right? And they think Tarshish was in northern Spain, which is like hundreds and hundreds of miles from Israel, where you know where he was. Uh, uh, certainly from Nineveh, you know, it was like as far as you could go in in terms of the the world. Then I think it's the honesty, you know. I mean, Jonah was 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 honest, and God kept using him. And you know, God says in Isaiah, you know, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. And, and, and so, you know, you've got the songs of Asaph in Psalm 73 when, when he said, you know, that he was mad at the wicked, always prospering. And that, you know, as for me, I try to be righteous and, you know, terrible things happen to me and it isn't fair. And then he says, if I had a thought like that, I would have been unfaithful to you and to your people. And so I went into the sanctuary of, of the Lord and then I understood, you know. There's, so there's nothing wrong with coming honestly to God with all the, all the troubles and all the problems. And I, you know, I really don't think there's anything wrong with saying to God, you know, I really don't feel like 
praying, but I've come into your presence, or to praising, I've come into your presence, and here I am. And even maybe just the act of being in, in his presence is an act of worship, which it is. So, um, you know, God is faithful, but I think honesty is the key. I think it would be terrible if we just turned up and said, hey God, I'm really not feeling good about this, but I'm just going to pretend that everything's all right. So do you think it's possible to compare worship to other forms of music? Look, you know, I do, I don't, I'm not sure I can compare it, but I, I do know that there is a dynamic in corporate worship that is unique to, to Christianity. And, it, you know, it, it, fair enough, it began way back in the Old Testament, times under the, the, the Old Covenant. But, um, you know, when David brought the ark back into Jerusalem, he just said, you know, we're going to sing we're going to get all the people together and we're going to sing over this and to God. And he wrote the Psalms that, that were corporate. And so there is an incredible dynamic that takes place, I think, which is, um, it's almost like God has kept it for his own, right? I, uh, there's a book called the Oxford Dictionary of Religion, right? If you go and look up hymns, and if you look up songs, there's nothing in it, really. But if you look up hymns, I think there's a couple of inserts. One is about the Sikh religion, and it's, it's, it lists two or three ancient Sikh hymns that were sung, right? And then the rest of it is all about Christianity, because we, we, we for some reason, you know, start thinking of all the other religions in the world, and most of them have chants and actions and stuff that you do, but very, very rarely do people just get together and sing their heads off. And, it, and I sort of wonder whether God is saying, look, this, this is mine. You know, when he created the world, the morning stars sang together. There's something that God likes about all his people joining with one voice and, and singing. And so I think it's an incredible dynamic. You know, I'm, I'm not sure of all that, you know, what it would be compared with because I think it's unique. I really do think it's unique. Uh, I have a friend who's a, a bank manager. And the bank manager is back home in Belfast at Christmas. They have to pay for the Christmas party. So he's paying for the Christmas party, and he decides to bring all his, his bank staff back um, to his house. Now, his, his wife is my uh, musical arranger. She's a keyboard player. They have a big grand piano in their house. And, you know, they had this great party, and all these guys are drunk, you know, out of their heads. Excuse me for saying this on Christian radio. But uh, they're all, you know, out of their heads. They're not Christians, and they came back into his house, and they're all happy, and they saw the piano. And... Uh, He said, who plays the piano? And Steve said, my wife does. And he said, please bring her in and we'll sing. And he said that they sang for two hours, solid. Abba songs, Billy Joel songs, Gordon Lightfoot songs. And she dropped in wee choruses and stuff like that that they maybe sang when they were little. And uh, he said to them at the the, the end of it, you know, one of the guys, he says, you know, what was all that about? Because, you know, they're sitting in his house and they're just singing for two hours. And the guy says... We never get to sing. Isn't that interesting. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> he said, we never get to sing like that. We ne- we, you know, when do people get to, to sing out there in the, the big bad world? And so we have this unique thing that uh, I think God has, has, has blessed the church with. And it's, it's, it's called corporate celebratory worship. And it's a dynamic. And God works through it. And people get healed in it. People get saved in it. And uh, there's something about what he's put in us that likes to sing. So is that, is that a fair answer? So I think it's unique. It has no comparison. <laughs> that was composer and worship leader Robin Mark. Thanks for joining us for the Breakforth Canada podcast. Look for more resources for your ministry on the Breakforth Canada website at www.breakforthministries.com. This Breakforth Canada podcast has been brought to you by Genesis Integration. Check us out on the web at www.genint.com. I'm Brent Bauman. So long for now.